Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to talk about the introduction to ethical theories uh, and in this the first part consequentialism and non-consequentialism. Now what is an ethical theory? We would recollect from the class that we have had held earlier. An ethical theory is a normative claim about uh, the value domain. It is trying to take a uh, theorize that what is the basis on which people take a moral decision. Now, coming uh, to the first uh, part of our claim, uh, of, our, of our study over here is uh, ethical theories and we are going to discuss about consequentialism and non-consequentialist theories. Now, if you pay attention on the screen, it is written that consequentialism includes any theory that judges the moral character of an action by the results, consequences of that action. Non-consequentialism, on the other hand, includes any theory that judges the moral character of any action independent of the result or the consequences of that action. And this is also known as uh, the set of deontological theories. Now, let me show you why I have written two words over here. Extrinsic and intrinsic. What does uh, that mean. Why, why do we have an extrinsic and in intrinsic written over here? Now, uh, deont uh, a consequentialist um, ethics domain is not a theory of ethics. It is uh, a category of uh, ethical theory in which there are various ethical theories that can be subsumed. Now, we are aware that every action that we uh, do has a consequence, has a result. We have learnt it as in our childhood that every thing that we do, every act that we do has our consequences and are the consequences determine what uh, kind of act we choose to do. So, in a way it is a trivial truth that well, uh, a certain kind of act brings in a certain kind of consequence and uh, having the consequence in mind we do the act. So, it is almost a metaphysical necessity that certain kinds of uh, acts have always resulted in certain kinds of uh, uh, consequences and thereby we assume that well, these acts result in these kinds of consequences. Now, coming to moral behavior or a moral theory. A moral theory essentially makes a moral judgment. It is a theory about deciding between right and wrong, a theory about making a choice, uh, giving uh, adequate parameter to the moral domain. Now, what does consequentialism claim? It claims that the, uh, for any moral theory to be uh, uh, under the ambit of consequentialism, it has to judge an action by the results or consequence of that action. Now, does it strike you all that how can this even be possible? That how can there be, are there actions without consequences? I mean every action we are aware of has consequences and thereby we decide that uh, choose which act to do. What is there? Are there acts without any consequences or, or do we decide on something without taking the co uh, consequences into action? Well, we will see about that because a lot of moral philosophers have um, uh, contested the claim that all actions are consequentialist actions. Now, coming to uh, consequentialism, it is a claim that is uh, saying that the, any action can be judged as right, wrong or any moral judgment on any action can be passed dependent on its consequences. Now, an act uh, can be metaphysically separated with the consequences it brings about. So, uh, it is a matter of almost a metaphysical necessity that there is a correlation between acts and their consequences and similar kinds of acts bringing similar uh, under the same uh, circumstances and laws following bring the same kind of uh, results. Now, this is something we take to be trivially true and the consequentialist 
maintains that there is a distance between the uh, anticipated consequence and the act. And this consequence determines whether the act, uh, uh, however the act can be judged. Now, why do I say something as extrinsic? Extrinsic is, well, when we do something for uh, uh, a goal, for a, an objective in mind, we call it extrinsic. So, this is fairly easy to imagine. Extrinsic actions are goal directed behaviors, which are full and plenty uh, that we do today. That well, uh, if, 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 if you want uh, to do uh, score well, you have to study hard. So, you are studying hard is towards a goal. So, extrinsic can be understood in a certain way as goal directed behavior. So, by contrast, what would intrinsic mean? Would intrinsic mean that behavior that does not have any goal? Well, not exactly. Uh, a uh, uh, intrinsic actions would be actions that are valuable or that are, uh, that have goals in themselves or that are themselves the goal of or the purpose of that act. Let me uh, put in uh, uh, an example. Say, you are enjoying watching a sunset every day evening on the top of your uh, accommodation. Now, is that for a purpose? Yes, on in the deeper sense you can say you feel happy about it, you are it brings about calmness, if uh, I am assuming that it does, but are these the consequences or are these uh, intrinsically a part of the reason? why you go up. That is, when you watch a sunset or when you watch a sunrise, perhaps mostly you are watching it because it is intrinsically valuable to you. That is, it is valuable for what it is, not for what it brings about. This is a uh, crucial difference that we need to keep in mind. Non-consequentialist uh, belongs to what it is and consequentialism talks about what it brings about. Okay, now, we have seen that there is, uh, if you could pay attention on the slide now, uh, consequentialism is um, includes, by itself it is not a theory, it, it is a domain under which you know, the theories that judge the moral character of an action by the results or its consequences of that action fall. So, the kind of moral theories that depend on use the consequence as the parameter are consequentialist theories. We have understood as it as extrinsic or the purpose of, uh, um, of the action is extrinsic to the action. We have called it or we have also understood it as goal directed behavior. It is about what acts that bring about something, right? What it brings about. Non consequentialism, on the other hand, includes any theory that judges the moral character of an action independent of the uh, consequences of that action. It is also known as deontological theories. So, what we have assumed as non consequential, some things are that are valuable in itself. Now, if things are valuable in itself, that is, or actions which are valuable in itself are uh, actions that are valuable in itself are non consequential, can fall into non consequential theory. Now, let us imagine an act because intuitively it is very easy for us to believe what uh, uh, is uh, a consequentialist act. But can we imagine what a non consequentialist act would be? Is there something that we do not for a, uh, achieving a consequence or not desiring a state of uh, affair or a consequence? Well, uh, one example that we talked about was the, uh, uh, that of a student uh, relishing the joy of uh, the view of a uh, sunset or a sunrise or 
a view of nature or watching the skies or uh, the, the fine arts give an uh, excellent example of things which are uh, intrinsic, intrinsically valuable, that is valuable in themselves, right. Uh, but we will talk more about the domain, whether the, uh, of, of deontological, uh, uh, the deontological domain of, uh, whether there can be theories, which can actually claim that there are things valuable in themselves, and not to the consequence that they lead to. But for now, we will, our fo uh, area, our, our focus would be on consequentialism. Please focus on the next uh, slide now. Given that we have uh, talked about that well, intuitively perhaps it is aware that consequentialism, uh, is the most obvious basis of human behavior, that all our actions are generally goal driven. We raise some important questions here. Let me read out the questions. Are there intrinsic reasons for actions, or isn't it that all reasons are extrinsic or consequential? What are desirable consequences? What makes one set of consequences more desirable than the other? Consequentialism does not commit to the content of the consequences. Okay. Now, let us take these questions one by one. Are there intrinsic reasons for actions, or is not it that all uh, reasons are extrinsic or consequential? We just talked about this theory, that uh, whatever we act, how do we decide, how do we choose a course of action? We choose a course of action by uh, uh, let us get to the basics. What is the fundamentals of human thinking, that decides moral choice, or any choice for the matter of fact. We start with a, uh, a familiarity, with a certain uh, kinds of actions, which have led to a certain kind of consequence. Now, that we desire that certain kind of consequence, we do the certain kind of action. First, it assumes a principle of correlation, if not causality, between actions and their consequences and that this is a sustainable, stable uh, relation. And thereof, when we uh, make a, when we choose an action, we have the consequence in mind. If I want to get uh, slimmer, I would exercise. If I want to uh, uh, sto score well in the exams, I would study hard. So, these are some of these conditionals, or if then statements, uh, which uh, exemplify uh, consequentialist behavior. Now, the first question it talks about that, uh, that there are intrinsic reasons for actions, uh, but is not it that all reasons are extrinsic or consequential. Now, just as we had talked earlier, that there is a tendency for us to understand all reasons, as uh, reasons for actions as uh, extrinsic or consequential, that whatever we do, we do it for a purpose. Can there be a purposeless action? That is the question. purposeless action. Now, are there purposeless actions? Now, because we are used to uh, uh, purposive actions, actions which have a purpose, which have a consequence in mind, uh, this domain of purposeless action seems to be a difficult domain. We will talk about this, when we talk about deontological ethics. For now, let us talk about consequentialism. Now, uh, given that we assume that whatever we do, we do it, the acts that we uh, perform, are performed with a consequence in mind. Now, the first question that comes out, which is question number 2 in this sequence, what are the desirable consequences? What makes one set of consequences more desirable than the other? Given that well, we have consequences, and consequences determine what acts we do, but how do we decide which consequence is more desirable than the other? How do we choose one consequence over the other? Now, this is where you, uh, you need to remember that consequentialism is not a theory of ethics, it is a domain of ethics. It just claims that, well, uh, acts are to be determined by their, uh, the consequences they bring about. Now, what kind of consequences? That is where theories uh, come about. So, uh, whether this consequence should be happiness, as we, many of us would be familiar with, this should be anything else, say x. Now, these uh, consequences that we target, determine what moral theory we are talking about in the uh, consequential domain. 
consequentialism per se number 3 does not does not commit to the content of the consequences. So, consequences can be anything from uh, happiness, satisfaction that would determine what moral theory are we talking about. Can we think of any other consequence that could be the target of uh, uh, consequentialism that describes the domain of consequences or how do we uh, make a hierarchy of consequences. This is the job of the moral theory and it is under the ambit of consequentialism. So, uh, to determine the hierarchy of consequences, un, uh, we have a moral theory, which is largely under the ambit of consequentialism. Now, two of the f uh, f uh, very famous and talked about consequentialist th uh, theories have been uh, uh, utilitarianism and eudaimonism, Aristotle's eudaimonism or perfectionism. Now, happiness comes as a, a desirable consequence. Uh, there could be a, a third consequence that is perfection. Perfection as a consequence. So, what do we mean that when happiness is a consequence or a moral theory that is describing a consequence? A moral theory needs to describe what is the hierarchy of consequences. Now, uh, utilitarianism is one, uh, eudaimonism is another, a case study or an example of uh, moral theory. Now, coming to uh, uh, utilitarianism or uh, it describes happiness as the uh, desirable consequence and that when we have uh, any action that promotes happiness becomes a, uh, an indicator of whether the action is right or wrong perfection, any action that uh, brings about perfection becomes an indicator of whether the action is right or wrong or any other value judgment that takes place according to it. Let us go to the next slide now. We will be talking about utilitarianism in the com uh, coming lectures. For now, let us stick to consequentialism and see what kind of questions do we need to answer and be clear about what it is to be a consequentialist. Now, what are the issues with consequentialism? There can be many moral theories with contradictory view on the content of desirable consequence, but still under the ambit of consequentialism. For example, utilitarianism is only a kind of consequentialism, which describes the desirable consequence as utility or happiness. The other one that we talked about was perfectionism, also known as eudaimonism after Aristotle. Uh, perfectionism is again another kind of consequentialism, which describes that desirable consequences as those which promote perfection. So, we are looking at actions that promote perfection. So, it depends on what is your parameter or your compass. For the utilitarian, it is the happiness. For the uh, eudaimonistic individual, it is perfection. So, acts that promote uh, perfection, but then there are few more questions that arise, whose perfection and or whose happiness or whose consequences and when are the consequences, are they long term or short term. This is an important question that uh, the consequentialist has to ask and then this is also a question that that is where the consequentialist may get. Uh, bothered and trouble. Now, look at it this way, it is a very commonsensical way of taking decisions uh, by uh, choosing consequence, by uh, visualizing consequences and thereof choosing the actions. But how do you visualize consequences? Consequences now or consequences later? How would you assign a temporal factor to these consequences? By time? 
or uh, what about unintended consequences. Many times we land up with consequences that we do not intend, can they be judged? Well, these are some of the questions. Now, let us take it one by one. What is the difficulty? Now, the consequence, consequentialist has to define or has to explain that what is the uh, term of the consequence that he takes. Say, an, uh, a, a government uh, body sitting to take a policy decision on uh, interest rates. How lo uh, now, it clearly these are actions which are teleological or purposive. Now, now this, this uh, body has to decide or now will know whether its action is right or wrong depending on the consequence that comes about. Now, look at it this, look at this. There is an interesting uh, uh, possibility over here. Now, if the bank, um, let me use the board now to explain this, this uh, predicament of the uh, consequentialist. Assuming that you are a consequentialist, your goal to tweak interest rates to control inflation. Now, if this stands to be your goal that you want to tweak interest rates to control inflation, you act increase interest rates or decrease, I am not an economist to be very clear about that. So, say I increase uh, interest rates and The consequence is inflation controlled or let us say inflation not controlled. And now, this happens over a period of time. When the uh, board, uh, when the committee sits to uh, decide on the interest rates and from the uh, time they expect the policy to have an effect. So, uh, can we judge whether the policy was right or wrong by the result it brings along or, but we have studied in uh, these, these uh, well uh, intentioned economists have studied that well to control and uh, interest rates. Uh, or to, to control uh, inflation, we have to uh, increase interest rates and they did what they had studied and well, they find that inter, uh, inflation is not controlled. Now, does it make the theory wrong? Does it make the economists bad economists? Well, in this here, the, in this sense, it is not a moral term, it is a functional term that when we say that this is a, uh, a bad policy, is because the policy did not achieve its intended consequence. Now, substitute this with a, a moral dilemma. Suppose you want to uh, uh, help an alcoholic, right? That is, you want to de addict him or her. Now, what do you do? Or you are uh, usually responsible, you are a banker and you uh, pay his pension to pay uh, to the uh, current alcoholic. So, you stop his funding. Now, say what happens with the consequence? Let us assume that well, 
he continues to take alcohol, but now starts stealing. The alcohol continues, starts stealing. Now look at this, this is an interesting uh, uh, a closer moral dilemma that we come across. Now our goal was to help an alcoholic, we stopped his funding and what we find that alcohol, uh, he continues to have alcohol, in fact he has already started stealing. So our intended effect was not achieved, in fact uh, quite on the converse, he started doing something which was uh, clearly wrong. So, now we have to judge the action, the action that we took, stop funding. Now, is this the right action or wrong action? Now, uh, imagine if, if he would have stopped uh, uh, consuming alcohol, it would have become a right action, because we stopped funding and thereof he did not have any funds, so he um, stopped. Uh, he could not buy liquor and he stopped uh, taking alcohol. This is a consequentialist way of uh, evaluating an action. So, well there is nothing intrinsically or in itself right or wrong about the action. Sto uh, to stop funding is, no, there is was nothing intrinsically right or wrong about your action. Then what about your intention? You could stop funding uh, with the intention to uh, for him to be, to suffer and thereof perhaps to start stealing or you could stop funding with a, with a, with a honest intention for him to improve. Now, this is where the consequentialist faces a little difficulty. Can consequences decide everything? Uh, now, if you pay attention on the slide, the third question in this slide we come across is, are the consequences always foreseeable? So, we have uh, uh, the next slide talks about how far are the consequences, oh, it is short term or long term. So, basically are consequences foreseeable and how long or how far are the consequences. Now, let me uh, illustrate this with an example. Say you have, uh, 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 you are a moral agent, you are a person and you are taking a decision, say so you are a, uh, a parent. Now, as a parent, you come out, you have a child and you are strict with the child. You are strict with the child for the consequence that will be or she will be well groomed, right. This is the long term consequence. However, this strictness in the short term or in his uh, or uh, let us assume it to be uh, a male child, that this strict be, uh, upbringing leads the child to become rebellious in adolescence. Right now, and this rebelliousness has landed him in trouble. Right now, as a parent of the child, you have chosen strictness as the action, and simplistically put, that has your intention was that it be uh, the child turned out to be well groomed and well but it eventually turned out that in short term, he became an uh, rebellious adolescent, landed in trouble and let us assume that he commits suicide. So, there is then no long term. Now, this is a very painful example and uh, we would rather hope that nobody uh, goes through this, but this is a common dilemma that parents face because when they choose a moral action, the way uh, the moral ethos with which they would raise their children, they have the long term good in mind, but if that long term good pays off as uh, or, or uh, 
brings forth short term consequences which are unhappy or which is uh, which is tragic in this case would you say that this result would you say that this result here or here determines whether this action was right or wrong now in that way in that case if if uh, the uh, they say the next sibling is again raised in a strict environment and turns out to be a very gr well groomed uh, individual how do you decide whether uh, which action is right or wrong depending on the consequences in that case does it not take away uh, a lot of uh, uh, somewhere uh, it is uh, counterintuitive to the moral sense that well we are judging an action by the consequence that it brings along let us also take another example let us say sometimes of an uh, wicked intention we get a unintended good result. Will this act be termed as good or right or wrong? Now, this depends a wicked intention would clearly be a, a wicked act wrong act for us, but with, uh, un, uh, with strange circumstances we find it results to an unintended good consequence. We have all heard of that joke where, uh, uh, where uh, uh, an individual was rewarded for saving a child from the well and uh, when in the award ceremony he was asked that well when uh, how did you decide on doing such a brave thing. So, well, he very frankly, honestly said that, well, uh, I, before answering that question, I would like to know who in that crowd surrounding that well uh, pushed me into the well. So, thereby uh, sh showing that, well, uh, he did, he did uh, fall into the well or he was pushed into the well and saved the child uh, as an accident, not as an unconscious choice, but the consequences were good. So, does he deserve the reward or not? Now, this is an, uh, a problem that the consequentialist does face. When you describe the consequences, how sure are we of consequences? Let us go to the next slide. What about, yes, as we talked about, what about the actual consequence or expected consequence? What is the object of judgment? What if there is a difference between the two, as we clearly saw in the case uh, talked about uh, just now? What does it, uh, it leads to a distinction between act consequentialism and rule consequentialism. We will talk about that in detail. And then there is, uh, it's trying to, the difficulties that consequentialist faces. He is trying to explain justice and rights in consequential terms. The role of agent, the consequence for the individual or for the group, uh, uh, the consequential, the consequences are related to the agent or it is independent of the agent. Anyway, there are various questions that we need to tackle, especially whether it is relation between equality or and consequentialism. We will talk about it now.